welcome to Half the Battle! We're getting back to the comic this week and taking a look at issue 68, Cut and Freeze Dried. Huh, weird title. This issue sees the debut of Battle Force 2000. In the year 2000. In the year 2000. I'd like to say I planned this, what with the Vector being the last G.I. Joe toy review and all, but... I'd honestly forgotten it was this issue that was coming up. Before we start, quick recap. Cobra has sold Terrodromes to Frusenland, a country made up for the comic that's vaguely Scandinavian. Cobra then uses those bases to send out fear and paranoia inducing sound waves, leading to riots so Cobra can sell them even more weapons. So let's see how that's all going. The cover looks very promising, with the Persuader, Snowcat and Awestriker getting dropped from a plane to engage the Baroness, who has his tanks. The first page is kinda the reverse of that, as it shows the Baroness in pursuit of the cargo plane, wanting to destroy it before it lands. Now, the vehicles do drop out of the plane, but it isn't nearly as high up as the cover suggests. It still looks really cool though. Just not as spectacular! So the Joe vehicles race towards the Baroness's column, that has maggots in it for some reason, even though that's a long-range artillery weapon. Also, the worm's driver is colored really weird. They show off the Persuader as it takes out a his tank, leading to a sort of domino effect. You know, for a laser, it's kinda weird as it looks like it shoots to the sides, too. It's nice to see Covergirl as the gunner, considering her figure hasn't been on Toy Store shelves in ages by this point. Anyway, this allows all the Joes to escape to the tundra, while the Baroness calls for backup from their floating command center, the freighter. There, Cobra is coordinating the response to the revolt going on in the country, after selling the Prime Minister their services. He's not happy that they fired on Americans at the airport, but since technically Cobra is working for him, he's up to his neck in it too. In one of the terrodromes, the reader gets an info dump about the sound waves by way of a techno viper explaining it to Cobra Commander. Who I remind you is a fake. He's a crimson guard that took over and he almost slips up by giving away he doesn't know about the project as much as the real commander would. What was the name of that Eskimo that sold us the plans? His name? One more time! You not see nothing like the before he can dig himself deeper into the hole, he's informed the Baroness calls for aid and Mambas will answer. His departure is observed by two new Joes, and this is the introduction of Battle Force 2000 as they are Blocker and Blaster, the latter listening to music from his Walkman. Just ask your parents, kids. This seems to protect him from Cobra sound waves, as he's fine while Blocker's getting cranky. You know, when I started reading this issue, I actually wondered if they'd address that the Joe should be affected too, and I'm glad that's the case. We meet two more Battle Force 2000 members, Dodger and Avalanche, who are, um, having a culinary discussion. Ham and llama beans again? No way, Dodger! You'll eat what I cook and like it, Avalanche! Note that either the speech bubbles are pointing at the wrong guy, or the names in them are reversed. Huh, second review in a row where speech gets messed up. I swear I don't plan these things. Blocker joins the fracas, but Blaster spots Maverick arriving and sees he isn't affected, concluding that his helmet prevents that. This combined with seeing Cobras wearing headphones, he realizes sound is a problem and it can be neutralized. But isn't the cure worse than the disease? Meanwhile, the other Joes are feeling the effects too, and it isn't helping with their escape. Cobra's closing in, with the Baroness driving a his tank 666. <laughs> that's a nice touch. But they don't get it all their way, as the Joes bring down the commander's Mamba. He's okay though, just a little singed. He orders an artillery barrage, but it falls short, weakening the ice so they can only pursue in wolves. Also, the Ice Viper has a weird color scheme here. Cobra goes in for the kill, assisted by the other Mamba that takes out the Ostriker, though Hawk and Iceberg survive. Hawk seems to be a little messed up though, as uh, he's talking to himself. Was the editor asleep at the wheel or something? They do take out the wolf using the saved law. 
Still, they are hopelessly outnumbered and outgunned, and are gonna be finished off by a barrage of missiles, called Ski Missiles, even though that's not what they are, that's the other thing on the wolf. At the last second, the missiles get strafed into oblivion by Battle Force 2000 coming to the rescue. And I hope you enjoy that image, because that's as cool as they're ever gonna look. Yeah, they don't get the show off again. Case in frickin' point! Sorry we couldn't make it sooner, but we had to knock out all the terror drones first. Really? You took out all the terror drones? You know, that's something I, and I think a lot of comic book readers, might have wanted to see. An epic battle between Battle Force 2000 and terror drones? Yeah, that would have been hella cool. So why in the name of Serpentor's ballsack didn't you show us that comic? Seriously, that one line of text is all we get. This issue is just lucky that all the other action in it is excellent, or I would have spent a lot more time complaining. Anyway, they formed a future fortress, and god, that thing looks dumb, to prepare for Cobra's next attack, since they're getting reinforcements. Meanwhile, in Frusenhagen, people have chilled out considerably now that the sound waves are gone. No more anger, no more strife. It's almost as if Twitter got blocked in the country. Duke rides up and explains Cobra's plot between pages, so the Prime Minister orders them to GTFO, which they promptly do, saving the Joes. Okay, why though? I mean, leaving the country, sure, that I get. But they were a minute away from destroying a good part of the Joe team, including their commanding officer. If I had been the Baroness, this wouldn't have ended the same way. Few indeed, Hawk. Few indeed. And that was issue 68, Cut and Freeze Dried. I still don't get the title, but the issue was great. This has the awesome running, or should I say driving battle between the Joes and Cobra, and it's one of the best battles in the comic period. It's also the end of a long-running plot that technically started all the way back in issue 2. Talk about playing the long game! It was also a good introduction to Battle Force 2000, though Knockdown kinda got the shaft, only seen in the background and conveniently being asleep when they were fighting amongst themselves. The only bad things I can say is that the speech bubble errors were unfortunate, and some of the coloring choices looked really, really bad, and some were just wrong, like the Ice Viper. Overall, yeah, a great issue, a great story, and one of the best issues in the series. Go read it! Well, I'll see you next time, everybody, and hey, why not like, share, and subscribe, if that's your thing?